moving from Wall Street to Main Street to help small business owners have the same capital as corporate America and give them the same resources as a larger company. We cover business funding, business credit, scaling, business consulting, and much more. Check out the website at shieldadvisorygroup.com. Welcome to the show. The Liquid Lunch Project. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Liquid Lunch Project. I am Matthew R. Meehan, alongside my partner, Luigi, the professor, Rosa Bianca. What's going on, Lou? Matthew, what's up, partner? You know, every so often, you come across a special person who's known by one name. You've got Pele, you've got Jordan, and that name just resonates. But once in a lifetime, we meet a man that is known by a letter. Today we have Donnie P. Donnie P, welcome to the Liquid Lunch P. It's, it's a pleasure, guys. Uh, thanks for having me on to your show, man. I look forward to talk about entrepreneurship and my uh, what I have going on in life right now and possibly my book, man. So it's a pleasure being with y'all guys, man, and talk to your audience on how I got started in business and stuff like that. Awesome, man. We're glad you're here. So, Donnie, you know, why don't you give us, let's start from the beginning and work through. So, tell us the man of mystery, Donnie P. Yeah, so, man. It's a pleasure to do that. So, is P your real last name or are we missing a couple letters out there? What's going on with uh, that? P is my real last name, man. I, I changed it back a couple of years ago uh, when I moved out here. To, I'm in Houston, Texas. So, okay. Uh, originally born and bred from Louisiana, South Louisiana, Cajun country, like Lafayette, where we got the good good cooking at, you know, so uh, that's where I'm originally from, man. And then I migrated here to Houston, but I've been an entrepreneur all my life, man, since I was 21 years old. I've been a millionaire since I was 21, straight out of college. I uh, started up in the healthcare field and um, done healthcare for multiple years, made money, lost money, uh, went dead broke again, then made a million dollars again with my brother. Um, I gave him some experience on running the company, so um, I could have took it over, but I didn't. So um, let him get his parents wet, get his feet wet, like they say, and uh, done long-term care, done that for multiple years. Now I'm in the cannabis business, man. Got the green rush going on, like everybody else. You got to get in, get into the game. Yeah, that's, you know? that's, a big, that's a big business these days. I mean, people have been trying, working in this space for probably the last 10 years. I, I know it really, really started to develop. How long have you been in the cannabis space for now? Well, me and my brother started back in uh, 2016. We were located in Homer, Louisiana, where the um, storm hit, man. It devastated the area. Thank the creator that um, our building was not touched in the midst of all that danger. And now we're helping a lot of people right now. So um, we started back in 2015. Uh, one of my friends called us, say, look, man, get into the game. So we got into the process. And uh, right now we had to uh, fight through the red tape. Um, both re um, Republicans and Democrats see the benefits of cannabis in the state. Um, medicinal cannabis, what it has done to people and improved their lives so much. And coming from a healthcare background, I really appreciate what cannabis has done because cannabis has been stigmatized for years unnecessarily. So now they see the benefits of it and I'm loving it as we go. Donnie, let's take one step back before we take three steps forward. So let's set the stage here. Mo most of our audience is uh, audio. It is a podcast. So we need to set the stage for them. Donnie P right now is wearing a beautiful single-breasted navy blue suit with a yellow bow tie, a, crisp, a crisply starched white French cuff shirt, large-rimmed glasses, a goatee that is probably a number two on the trim scale. I mean, this is a fine Southern gentleman. <laughs> so what we like to do in our podcast is try to educate our clients in various fields. Our clients are, and, and friends and family are all small business owners. We're all in growth mode. We want to make the world a better place. A lot of our clients are in the healthcare sector. It is a wonderful calling. As you said, you're doing the Lord's work. However, it is a very frustrating sector for many reasons. Give us some insights as to the frustrations that a healthcare business goes through on a, on a, on a quarter day, day in basis um, and how you pivoted out of that, took that knowledge and now we're applying it to a new field. Uh, great question, Luigi. Um, I get asked that all the time in my previous podcast interviews and um, how I navigated the, the industry since I was 21 years old. It's a lot of red tape. Um, now granted, the the feds and the states pray on time 
and they, they take care of their obligations. But the downside to it of it, man, it's a lot of regulations, a lot of laws you must follow, buy the book. Um, we get audited every year. Um, and no matter what, the, in Louisiana, the state can show up in your business at any time uh, without notice. Um, so you got to be on top of your game. So uh, my sister is an attorney and uh, starting in business off with no money. Uh, when I wrote my book, how, my book, How to Catch a Mouse with No Cheese, I, I went on to five different principles I started that helped me be an entrepreneur and progress in business. So what my, uh, my sister did was uh, put together all the legal framework as a guideline for me to follow in business. And I took it from there, man. So uh, it was a lot of red tape, um, a lot of shaking hands, meeting uh, people that's in the industry, in the healthcare industry, uh, dealing with regulations, uh, making sure that I was on top of things. And um, when I got out the industry, man, because I made so much money, um, they done another audit. Uh, they tried to send me to jail for trying to find uh, scrupulous uh, regulations and law didn't follow, but I was on point, man, everything. And uh, it, it was ridiculous, man. And I'm glad. Um, I love the people I help. I love everything about it, man. But it, it was just too much in business. All entrepreneurs know in business, we want a free market, man. We Just give us the the guidelines and the laws to follow, and we'll do it. That man, it, it was just—it was just too much regulations. Too keep much. your hands out. Keep your hands out of our pocket and your eyes out of our bedroom, right? <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah. the same, man. But uh, it was good, man. You know. Nice. So, how did you transition from home healthcare into cannabis? When did you see the opportunity, and what brought you towards cannabis itself? Uh, one of my friends called us, man, and uh, me and my brother was on the phone and. We had made a lot of money doing long term care and we, we was doing that for like 10 years, man. And we got tired dealing with it. Uh, we love the elderly, man. Love them. Good, good people, man. And um, we just wanted something new. And new. we wanted to get in the free market, to be honest with you. And um, our friend told us, look, Donnie, um, participate in this, which I'll have to to lose. And we're like, no, man, we ain't got nothing to lose at this point. You know, so we just participated in that. Louisiana, they issued uh, nine licenses out. They have one more they're going to issue out, the 10th license uh, coming up early next year. So we participated in the licensing procedure. Um, they sent us the guidelines through the uh, Board of Pharmacy in Louisiana. So uh, we put together our team. None of us was pharmacists, so we hired a pharmacist. Um, we had to get different pharmacists. Some tried to um, jack us, put the knife in our bag, but we too smart for that. Um, but other than that, we found a good one that wanted to partnership with us. And uh, once we found them, man, we was on the go. We presented in front of the board of uh, pharmacy. And then after that, man, we got awarded our license in, in the Homer region, man. So we got like seven parishes we're in charge of, man. And we're helping out so many people. I'm so glad. Uh, I can't even report on the comments that we'd be getting on, on social media of, of the help we've been getting, man. So that's how we started in business, man. So I really liked it. Uh, it was a procedure. It was very, very competitive process, uh, the licensing procedure in Louisiana. So um, uh, in the licensing beside that competitiveness is you you got to have money. So it's it, it's a must. So um, that's that's how we all started. Donnie P, can you uh, give uh, our audience some insights in how you start out the business? I mean, do you need a brick and mortar? Tell us a little bit about how you went about starting the cannabis business you're in. Well, um, when we started out in business, when we uh, presented to the Board of Pharmacy, we had to have a brick and mortar store. Um, they dictated what we must have in the store. We had to have a generator. Thank God we had that man dealing with the storm to because a lot of people are still without lights and we the generator. We had to have generator. We had to have, like I say, a pharmacist present to talk to the customers, our clients. Um, we designed our own building. Uh, we found a building. We, we put all the specifics the state had wanted inside the building. So you got to have like a brick and mortar. You can't have a like you know, no mom and pop set up. You've got to be very professional, like a regular pharmacist, man. So you got to be ready to compete in the game. So we bought our A game to the process and, and we, we bid it all of the competitor out. Nice. So Donnie, what's one piece of advice you would give to somebody looking to get into the cannabis business today? Uh, one piece of advice is number one, have faith. Number two, have uh, entrepreneurship um, 
on spirit inside of you because they're going to be days where, where you have say, look, man, I can't do it. You got to have the fortitude and the discipline to keep going because it's going to be very challenging. I'm going to be honest, very challenging sometimes, but you got to be persistent. And once you have that, then you got to have contacts with inside the ind industry and the state. OK, so once you get that, all those process done, then you got to have the money portion of it. So um, that's that's the step they must take to get inside the cannabis industry, man. Well, let, yeah. let me let me ask you this. Somebody starting out with no contacts in the state of the cannabis industry. Where would they start? Just putting off feelers to other people in the, in the cannabis industry. Uh, we got the National uh, Cannabis um, Convention coming up called um, MG, MJ BizCon over in Vegas. I would start there, man. It's, it's a lot of people. I went to my first one last year in New Orleans. Um, no, not last year, year before last, before before uh, the pandemic hit. Uh, me and my brother went, I met a lot of people inside the industry. So I would tell them, try to tr go to like national shows or go to your local shows. MJ Biz have local shows in your in your state, in the region that they can attend, attend so they can uh, go to those conferences and meeting other people. That's where I would start first make your contacts and then know the laws of your state of course mr p who are your clientele are they are they other doctors patients or do you have uh, a strictly b2c relationship um we started off mighty funny we had to educate the public mighty funny so <laughs> we had to do a lot of education in the process you are not making money so we had to educate the public first then we had to educate doctors there was one doctor, I'll never forget this man, when we started on out, he helped us a whole lot. He understood the benefits of cannabis over in home, a very good doctor, he still refers his clients, his patients to us. And then after the education uh, of the public, the doctors we had to educate, our most um, customers we have now is dealing with the elderly. So once our um, the drugs was, was proven that it worked, cannabis worked, other people came aboard. So right now we got regular Joe Blows, we got soccer moms, as they say. We got everybody, man, understanding the benefits of cannabis, you know, and, and that's a good thing. So because you have geographic limitations to your license, how can you scale your business? Can you can you expand via e-commerce? Uh, not now. Uh, e-commerce, we in a state law, we cannot like mail or, e or send over UPS or anything. Um, over to clients' house. What they have to do, we, they, in the law, in the state of Louisiana law, we can still deliver. Okay, so that's a positive uh, in our inside our region. So we still constraint. Also, we deal. We cannot mail outside the state dealing with federal laws right now. So uh, we working on that. Uh, hopefully, we can get this safe banking law passed. Uh, just read on yesterday. They, they attach it to the Def Defense Authorization Act, which is good. We need to have regular banking like any business. Uh, we tax, we, we still tax at a, a high rate. We can't operate as a normal business, which is crazy. Um, so so we still dealing with a lot of red tape we trying to fight through. So the, the banking issue has been going on for a long time with the cannabis industry. You know, I've heard stories of warehouses with stacks of cash in it, right? Because they can't mm -hmm. put their money in the bank. What is that in what is the industry doing as of right now? Are, are there banks that are, are that are taking deposits from cannabis companies? To my knowledge, Matthew, um, we still fighting that procedure right now. Uh, we working through some loopholes with within the state to try to get this this resolved, man, because it's ridiculous. We can still get robbed uh, of our cash. It's very dangerous um, to the industry. And hopefully we can get this um, this law passed through the De Defense Authorization Act, so we can even operate with the, with the major banks, because the major banks won't even touch us, and we making this it's a ton of money, which they're trying to get their hands on. So yeah. um, um, I, I know that I know all the difficulties with that. I, think, I mean, the cannabis market, I think you know, $30 billion marketplace, right? Yeah. It's, it's set to go to about 70 billion in the next five years, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I, I think in my opinion, it's just a matter of time before, you know, it, it's just legal federally across the board. And then and I think that's when banks will be more prone to open up to cannabis companies. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be um, in my opinion, it's gonna be much more open, man, but I'm thinking 
uh, send it to Chuck Schumer from New York, where the boy is at in New York. They figure how much money in New York about to become medicinal, I think recreational, I think one of the two. I'm not sure yet. I'm still learning about the state of New York. But once the boys up there finally figure out, hey, look, we need to move this legislation to figure out how much money they can make off it in New York, then we can get some action. So yeah. uh, we'd be finally getting that done. Hopefully. Yeah, I mean, the first step's to legalize it, then they're going to regulate it, right? And then they're going to yeah. tax it, right? And a lot of yeah. these states right now could use the money, you know? Yeah. It, it is a big, um, it's a big market, you know? And there's a lot of tax dollars that the states are going to be missing out on that don't participate. Yes, it's, it's a whole bunch of um, taxes the state can use, man, because Louisiana, let's put it frankly, all southern states needs the money. Louisiana, is, it, we need the money to operate, you know, roads, bridges and everything else, man. So, you know, they need the money, man. And cannabis is a good way to raise money fast for the state, man. They need the taxes, just like every other state, like in Denver, man. And people have been doing that for years out there. You know, yep. so um, they they making a, they made billions of dollars. They made billions of dollars over the years, man, which is good. You know? Yeah. Donnie, it sounds like you've had a really successful career and I take my hat off to you, but you know, throughout having a successful career, there's a lot of failures, right? So what would you say, what was one of your biggest failures that you had to overcome and what did you learn from it? How to manage my money, man. I didn't come from money. So, um, it was, it was trial and error, just like any entrepreneur, entrepreneur started, but I had drive and I had, I had bills to pay really before I get my car repo. So, you know, I, I had to get, get it done. I had, I had no choice, brother. You know, so uh, you got to have um, money management skills, which my, my brother has that. I don't. So um, I had to learn that, man. So and then trusting people, you know, a lot of people stab me in the back, you know, but I but, you know, you got to move on from that. And, and I learned a lot and I became more disciplined. So I, I would tell people those those three things, man, be careful. Um, you know, try to get money management skills, be disciplined at what you do and stay focused. Cause you know, uh, during my process, I, I made, and I was a millionaire at 21 and I lost it at 25. So it's having that is like, like this cliche saying, like to say, uh, like a monkey with a stick of dynamite. We come that <laughs> at a young age, man, you might throw that dynamite anywhere, you know? <laughs> you know, so, so that was, that was me, man. You know, uh, I can tell you some stories, you know, so. Is that where the book came from? Guys, I don't think we brought this up yet, but Donnie is the author of How to Catch a Mouse Without Cheese, right? So yes. Let's dive into the book a little bit. Why don't you give the audience a little insight into the book, where it came from, what it's about, and hopefully we can get them to go out there and pick up a couple copies. Yeah, man. Uh, well, starting from Louisiana, I live by, the, by a sugar cane, man. And I, that's how I got the name of it. And I, and I used to um, study the mouse when they come in my house. Uh, you know, the movements of, of the mouse through the house, man. And I didn't like mouse too much. So what I done was once I studied the mouse on the movement, I took my BB gun and I shot him from a distance. So uh, and that's how I got the book. That's how I came up with my title, How to Catch a Mouse with No Cheese. Right. So cheese is money. And I put it like business, business terms. <laughs> so I always knew at a young age that I was going to write a book. Right. So my book was my experience starting off in business. And I give like five different principles on, on ways of starting business, which is faith, um, money skills, discipline over love. I, I don't believe in love. I believe in discipline. The biggest virtue is discipline, not love. And anybody can tell you they love you. I, that, that doesn't matter to me. And giving back, man, community service. So that's why I talk about how I started off my, my business without no money. Really, I, I didn't have no money. So coming straight out of college, you know, you're broke. You know, and I didn't want to work for nobody because my parents was educators and say, Donnie, don't work on the plantation for nobody. So um, I, that's how I started, man. So hey, here I am today in the cannabis business. Who would have thought? Why don't you tell us? So we, we had Donnie 1.0 that was in the home healthcare business. Donnie 2.0 is in the cannabis space. What's Donnie 3.0? My next goal, like I told my brother, is hopefully they let us on the uh, New York Stock Exchange when it comes comes to uh, get a federal uh, federal past and everything. Hopefully we can get there, man. And that's it. That's, that's the ball game for me. And I always had a, um, a dream of, of getting on wall street or it was not getting on a Canadian stock exchange. So that's, that's the ball game. So that's why we get in different locations, get our revenue up in, in everything, man, and be a, a profitable company for investors. I mean, we have private investors now, but we want to take them to another level where we can make everybody get, get very, very rich, you know, do something with your money, you know, help, help out others. So that's, that's Donnie 
three part all i think you know donny <laughs> p's gonna ring the bell yeah <laughs> hopefully if i live that long luigi you know <laughs> uh, you will. He seems like you're a very determined man, Mr. P. Tell yeah, us some, right. Give us a, give us some insights as to uh, what you consider community outreach and giving back. You know, Matt and I think it's a fundamental. I don't even think it's a duty. It's more of an obligation. I think you know to whom much is given, much is asked, right? So I think it's only right to give back to the community, your, your community. Tell us what's going on down in uh, Louisiana and Houston, Donnie. Uh, yeah, well, I'm helping other entrepreneurs. Uh, because there's a lot of entrepreneurs that doesn't know the ins and outs of business. They have the drive, they have the discipline, but they don't they don't know business. So I'm helping them out free of charge, mind you, Luigi, uh, free of charge to them, which I don't mind giving them back and also give life left life lessons to uh, younger uh, adults and younger, younger children man. you know, help to grow up to be better, be a productive member of society, help out your people and helping them in a state of mind the end and helping them grow and become better citizens man so i do believe in giving back i, I plan on starting up my nonprofit next year once once i make the real money in cannabis next year because louisiana passed the law january 1 where we can start selling the bud people have been asking for it so um once we after that man once once i get past that i'm gonna start up my nonprofit where i can help out other entrepreneurs free of charge and also i, I want to go uh talk around to different um elementary uh, high school students on how I started up in business. So get more entrepreneurs in the game. So I, I don't want people, you know, people always say they want to live their dream and dream and uh, they want to own their own business. But I want to tell them how to how to own their own business, man. So that's that's how I plan on giving back to to my community and to society as a whole. Besides paying my taxes, you know. <laughs> I think uh, I think we all got to pay those taxes. Yeah. So, well, good things don't tend to happen. You know? yeah. Hey, Donnie, listen, it was a pleasure having you here. I want we're, we're kind of running out of time, but I want to let you tell the audience where where can they find you, and where can they find your book, and how can they get in touch with you on the socials? Okay, you can find me at on LinkedIn at Donnie P, and also I'm on uh, Instagram at Donnie P Official. Um, also, you can find my book on DonnyPBooks.net. That's my own personal website. Um, also, you can find my book on Amazon.com, Smashwords.com. It's everywhere on the internet. It's uh, BarnesandNobles.com. So my book is doing real good. Uh, sold in six different countries, done multiple um, interviews and um, a lot of podcasts. And uh, that's where you can find me. Nice. Donnie, let me ask you this, right? Because, I mean, you came, you came up and then you got into healthcare, you're in cannabis. But how was the process of writing a book? Because that's a little bit different than running a business. Yeah, right? how was totally, that totally different, uh, Matthew, man. Um, I wrote a book, man. I, I had my book in my head. And uh, when I when I done, I had owned a franchise at one time. So uh, I met this, I hired uh, this ghostwriter to take it. You know, coming from Louisiana, we can't put A and B and C together, you know. So uh, I went to public school. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, my friend. <laughs> you know, so I can't put that together. So what she done was she took all the words in my brain and she put it on paper, man. So um, she said, Donnie, you have a great story. I'm like, look, let's do it, man. So I paid her, man. And that's how I, that's how I went off and create my own book, man. You know? Awesome. That's great, Donnie. Hey, Donnie, last question before I let you run. Mm -hmm. One question for you. What does success look like to Donnie P? Uh, success is not money. Uh, success means to me helping others achieve their dreams. So after that, that is completed in my life, then I've completed my mission. And that's, I, that's what I like. I love that. I love that. Hey, Donnie, we appreciate your time. Thanks for being here, man. And we hope to have you back again once you have uh, nine different dispensaries. And hopefully <laughs> you remember us when you're ringing that bell. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. It's been a pleasure, man. I love it, man. All right, guys, thanks again for tuning in. And that's another wrap of the Liquid Lunch Project. Thank you for listening to the show. And make sure you subscribe, leave a review, and share it with a friend. We'll see you on the next episode of the Liquid Lunch Project.